Hey everybody, I wanted to do a super quick uh, just show off of Nuendo, um, not so much to be a, a patriot of Nuendo, but uh, because I'm actually really curious in what other DAWs uh, have to offer specifically for post. Um, so, uh, you know, like for instance, I've been checking out Reaper and so far I'm not really seeing like what the like serious advantages are for, for me personally. So I'd love to see uh, maybe somebody else's uh, show off video. Um, so what I did was I just um, really quickly uh, made a list here of the uh, top 10 things that I think are awesome about Nuendo that I don't think are in any or most uh, <clears throat> other DAWs um, that are specific for posts that I just love. Um, number one, actually I'll skip number one because I don't have that project uh, activated yet, but um, well, no, I'll just go ahead and do that. So the first thing is, I'll, I'll skip around, um, you can have multiple projects open. So here I've got um, one, this is a trailer I'm working on right now, and then I'll switch over here to uh, another one. So I've got two open, I'm gonna activate it so I can show the loudness track. Okay, so now it's activating, loading the mixer. And so that's the first one, um, two, two projects open at a time. Of course, um, all the uh, plugins have to load in, but you can have physically two sessions open, which allows you to drag and drop and that kind of fun stuff. So number two, going out of order here, uh, loudness track. Um, this is a, a new feature in six that's really become super, super handy. Uh, and what it does basically is will analyze um, your output bus, whatever you have um, selected as your as your main output bus, and it will do an LUFS calculation on um, the what would be coming out of that. So, for instance, I've got all this audio. Um, I, I, the way I'm using it in this case is I did a game cap of a game I'm working on of an hour of footage um, and uh, I um, did an analysis on it um, and let's see here, it's not showing up for some reason, should be showing up here in the LU range. Uh, anyway, you can see the line here, this is your LU. Um, going above and below 23, which is the standard here. So the red line here is the standard. So what this has allowed me to do is um, see in this game in particular, we've got gameplay and cutscenes. Um, and I wanted to get just kind of an overview of like how we're doing. We're trying to stick to that LUFS spec um, for headroom and just to be, uh, uh, just to, to sit nicely on the consoles and everything. So anyway, um, I was able to do an hour of game cap, do a quick analysis. It can do it offline um, of the entire entire thing and then also capture this data um, <clears throat> so I can see this first section here is a cutscene section and this is my gameplay so not surprisingly cutscenes are usually a little quieter um, so it looks like I might need to mix this a little bit back and a little bit up so just these kind of macro kind of analysis of like overall mix are super super awesome and then of course on trailers and stuff like that it's really handy to have it too so I'm gonna switch back over we'll go to the other session this one's gonna take a little bit to uh, to open back up but it's a uh, because it's got a bunch of um, uh, DSP in it. But I'll just quickly kind of preview. So with the uh, ADR fully integrated into markers, so basically you'll see up here, I can show it even, um, that... Um, that I've got marker tracks and in fact I can have as many marker tracks as I want um, and the markers uh, you know that's not new to any DAW but what this allows me to do is say I wanted to name this one Foley which I'll go ahead and do and then I can have another one called um, uh, ADR and um, I can just basically go through and spot my entire session for Foley and ADR, and I can make as many of these as what I want. So if I wanted to make, uh, you know, just a specific character's footsteps marker track, I can do that. And then where this becomes incredibly crazy powerful is that in my ADR win in my marker window, um, now I can select these and show just those cues. Okay, now we're not into in like insanely crazy awesome yet, but then check this out. Um, I can switch on ADR mode and um, I can uh, have to be careful to try not to show anything. Uh, this is not released yet. Okay, so um, so I basically have my markers here. I don't have them named, but we can call this dude clashes sword. Um, and then in this now, if I use this panel down here with ADR mode on, I actually have streamers and um, uh, built in so this to my knowledge is like something you have to pay extra money for and integrate and have an insanely like 
off, you know, a whole different workflow just to set up ADR and Foley. I did Foley for a lot of years in Hollywood, so I know how that's a weeks long project to queue up, um, you know, to queue up your sessions and then you're, you know, you're at the stage and then you're bringing it back and then it's, you're integrating it into your, into your other sessions and everything. This is all just completely integrated uh, with the streamers built in and then all the features you want us to preloading and all that and a whole matrix, you know, of queuing. So you can literally just run your entire session, you know, your Foley session right here from, or ADR session from Nuendo. Uh, moving on to the next one, um, exporting markers. Okay. So, Here's a, another branch point on the amazing marker system is that when I'm ready to ex start exporting um, finals or um, stems or pre-dubs or whatever it might be, um, A, we have, this is the this is the, uh, the export audio mix down window. And what this is, <clears throat> is just a, a really souped up um, way of exporting audio out of your sessions. So uh, in this box, we'll just take the quick tour. Um, these are every single one of my buses that's in the game, include, I mean, in the in the session, including like reverb uh, auxiliary sends and stuff like that. So um, yeah, FX channels. So um, any any audio channel, any group channel, uh, which is a, a synonymous with an aux in Pro Tools, um, uh, re rewire channels, audio tracks, whatever it is, they are all accessible to me on the export, on, on my mix dial. So when I'm ready to, to, to send this thing out, I can literally send every single place that the audio exists out at one time. Um, so now we're down here to the markers. So these beautiful markers that I set up um, throughout the session, um, now I can select them. So if I just wanted to export that piece of it, of, of the, of the track, um, then I could do that and matrix it with whatever, um, you know, bus or whatever master bus, obviously in, in most cases, but all these other, um, ways of exporting as well. Um, so where this becomes insanely powerful for game audio folk is that, you know, we're creating dozens, sometimes hundreds of, of individual assets for a character or for whatever. Um, and if you've got it markered out, which I just do now because it's so it's such a huge time saver. Um, if you've got it markered out, you can have 150 of these things um, have, you know, be layering all of your tracks. You know, in this case, you know, I might have some swords and some, you know, some armor and some VO have those all on different groups so that I can export them separately. Um, however, design them all in sequence with each other and then pick the appropriate markers that I want to export at any given time. I cannot tell you this has already saved years of production time, I'm, I promise you. Okay, so now um, you've got all this, all these files, right, um, that you just, you know, selected your options, uh, mashed a button to say export. Uh, now you obviously need those all named specifically and so they make sense all of your hundreds maybe thousands of assets that you just kicked out oh uh localization this feature you know if you've got um multiple languages you're you're shipping out to um this you know these features are also amazing for that um not to mention just kicking out stems and pre-dubs and all that for post uh, so the uh, so then here I won't get into it, but basically you can just set up a, an entire naming scheme for however you want, um, however you want the assets named, you, you know the sound files named, um, so you don't have to mess with that, um, it, you know, in an external tool. And then your file formats, if you did want to convert it to a different type of uh, file and blah blah blah. And then if you wanted to open it into an external processor, um, you know, external two-track destructive editor, you can do that. So that is the quick. And dirty on the uh, the mix down export um, the uh, okay so I covered that one and the next uh, the naming export the logical editor is super rad um, this is basically um, you know again I'm just hitting the branch like the super kind of you know uh, out there kind of features that are you know not the basic stuff just the stuff that makes you you know nuendo unique i feel like so here's another one i know this is actually in a few other um daws specifically ones that are like really great with midi like i remember this being in you know uh in uh i think it's in logic but anyway um so this is a logical editor and what it allows you to do is select again i'm just going to select my markers here and then it'll you can say basically um <clears throat> The, you can set properties that you want to logically um, manipulate and like where this becomes really handy is like renaming or changing some like MIDI um, 
uh, you know, some timing changes or randomizing a little bit of stuff. So basically what it allows you to do is select a bunch of stuff, um, do a search routine on, uh, on, you know, to filter out what you actually want to affect. And then down in here, um, so if event is muted, for instance, maybe you want to unmute it or, um, if, uh, whatever it's, it's, it's deep here. Um, and then on the operation side, this is kind of, um, what, how would you like to affect it? Um, I wrote a script here to basically just make me a bunch of markers really quickly for when I'm doing game audio assets uh, and just lay them out, give it a generic name, and then I go back in and do, do some um, uh, search replace to, to, um, to, to name the markers out. So anyway, this one's a little, I'm not explaining it super well, but this one's super powerful. Um, if you're kind of familiar with advanced kind of um, search and replace and kind of, um, you know, manipulating data features. This is uh, super cool. Uh, let's see, um, logical editor, uh, effortless bus configs. This is, um, you know, really the, you know, remembering back to, to the way Pro Tools does this versus Nuendo, just setting up buses and just setting up your sessions. Um, it's just way, way easier. I mean, basically you just, you know, you just do it all right here. They do, you do have a, an, another kind of menu here if you wanna um, kind of set up your bus configurations like more specifically. Um, but really to, you know, just to kind of set up, um, you know, a, a 12 group with three subgroup, you know, with three stem, you know, kind of standard DME kind of thing um, and a route a bunch of tracks to it. It's really not that hard to do. It's, it's all very doable right here from the context menus. Um, and, uh, uh, without kind of having this other layer of like having to set up and hook up an entire busing structure, like outside of the, you know, the actual, inter you know, the, the working interface. Um, the, uh, base management, um, now, I don't actually use the base management because I have outboard system for that. Um, but built into Nuendo is base management. Let me see if I can find it. I might not even be able to find it quickly because I don't use it. But um, this was a new thing. Uh, this is a little preview of the of the mixer here. I think I have to have control room set up, which I don't. So uh, maybe I'll just skip the the base management. But if you do, if you need base management in the box, uh, you can get it with uh, Nuendo. Um, Multiple projects open, I already showed that. Iosono AnyMix Panner, holy cow, this thing is awesome. Um, it's, I, I never imagined myself getting super excited about a panner, um, but this thing is really great. Um, let me see if I can pull one up real quick, show, show it off. This is not a surround session, so um, yeah, okay, let me just set up a super quick, let's add a quad track. send it to, oh, I need to send it to a quad bus here. So I am going to show how to set up a bus super quick. So it just popped this up for me. I'm going to set that up. Now, again, I don't have to like go and do a bunch of kind of routing outside of this. I can just go and send it there. Um, all right. So now that I have this here, now it knows that I need that panner. Uh, this is another kind of bonus feature that I don't really talk about much, but it's just like a, um, it's a, it's an advanced view. It's a, it's a kind of a dialed in view of just what's on your track, um, in, in all big and stuff. And this is where I do my, my mouse and click, uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, automation if I'm not using my control surface. Okay, so here's the AnyMix panner. I'm just giving you the a, a, just a view of it because I'm not going to get into all the features. But basically, this thing sounds amazing. It's it takes into consideration um, a, a lot. Of, you can dial in actual like um, uh, EQ. Uh, it, it it integrates some EQ and some other DSP into the the actual panning, and this thing just sounds really <laughs> really cool. Um, and that's built in. It looks like it's a different thing, but that's uh, just kind of included. Uh, modu okay, multi projects open, I painter, and then multi mixer views. This is really, really great. Um, again, 
Uh, I have a three, I have a four monitor setup basically. So I have one on picture and then three um, for monitors. And then I set up um, different mixers. So here's one mixer view. Let me go ahead and hide this. We don't need that anymore. Um, oh, that little thing that I had that's also part of Nuendo, that, that, menu, that uh, window I just closed, that's um, Notepad. Uh, it's just like a it's just a notepad in Nuendo. I keep all the client notes there. It travels with the session. It's super cool. Um, uh, let's see. So I was showing um, the mixer. So this is an example. This is kind of my working mixer. It's got every single audio track in it. And so when I'm kind of doing more pre-dub type mixing, I'm in here and it just shows me everything. And of course it's big. This session isn't huge, but it's a, you know, it's a trailer session. Um, and then, you know, you can kind of turn off um, you can, this here is your visibility pane, so it's very easy to um, turn on and turn off tracks. Um, so I'm just turning everything off so you can see that it's all off. This is just, um, the way this works is super cool. Um, so yeah, just say I wanted to see this stuff, and yeah, I get it that Pro Tools has this, but I just feel like this is really well integrated. Okay, and then my second mixer view. Uh, so again, this is kind of like everything's on here um, in this one. On my next mixer view, I only want to see just my my groups and my stems um, or pre-dubs and stems. So I'll show um, on my on my second mixer view. And you have you can actually build four separate ones, um, or maybe I was just was looking at that one. Um, let's see where'd that go. There it is. It's way over here. So on this one, I just have my groups, which is um, I have a few things snuck in here, but I'll just show you. Um, I just have my groups. So the cool thing is that I can have this one on one monitor that just shows my groups. And then I've got this one on another monitor that shows everything, and I can, I can um, shrink all this down um, somehow. I forgot how to do it right now for some reason, but I can shrink all these down and make them really small. Um, so anyway, that's it. I don't know how long this lasted. I was hoping it was less than ten minutes, but um, anyway, I'd love to see a, a one a video for. Um, you know, maybe that some of the newer features in 11, I don't have PT 11, I have uh, 10, I've used that quite a bit. Uh, I'd love to see some Reaper videos. That's what I'd love to see, actually. Uh, and uh, thanks.